Good morning, everyone. San Joaquin Valley Transparency. Today, I want to bring you a very disturbing story that was sent to me by a loyal supporter. First, let me give a shout out to this wonderful person who's been able to see past the mistakes I've made along the way and see the bigger picture of what this channel is trying to accomplish. Waylon Wires Old Iron is the channel name. A while back, I uploaded a video where my wife's car had the back window smashed in. When her company called the police, they told dispatch that the suspect was still in the area on a bicycle and gave a description. Dispatch told the caller that police were too busy to respond to make a report online. I'm guessing police were too busy responding to calls about people standing on a sidewalk with cameras taking pictures. Ken from Wayland's Wires Old Iron donated $500 to get the back window fixed. Actually the rock went through the back window, bounced around the car, and cracked the windshield as well and that's why it was expensive. The $500 was for the deductible. He relieved my wife and I of the financial burden. And for that, I want to say thanks again to my good friend, Ken. He recently reached out to me and sent me a story that needs to be highlighted. A man committed suicide because of a lie that an officer admitted to and also admitted to it being fun to lie. Here's how it went down. And I'm going to read you guys the article. Man kills himself after police officer lies that he'd seriously injured someone in a hit and run accident. As two Seattle police officers approached the home linked to a driver who had fled a hit and run, they discussed using a ruse to get information from the suspect. It's a lie, but it's fun. When a woman answered the door and said the suspect wasn't there, the officer used the ruse by telling her that a person was near death after the suspect left the scene of a collision that day. The woman was shaken and later told the suspect that the police had said, according to a government report, on the 2018 incident first reported by the Seattle Times, the woman later uncovered the officer's deceit, but not before unexpected tragedy struck. The suspect ended his own life less than a week after police visited the home. Now the officer has been disciplined after a police watchdog group found that his lie at least partly caused the suspect's suicide. Andrew Meyerberg, director of the city's Office of Police Accountability, wrote in his report, that the ruse was impermissible under the circumstances and that the officer's use of it shocked the conscience. Mr. Meyerberg also suggested that Seattle police train officers on when ruses are and are not appropriate. The officer said it was unfortunate that the suspect had killed himself but that he was not responsible for the suicide. According to the report, the document did not name anyone involved in the incident. Police Chief Carmen Best suspended the officer for six days without pay, the department said in a statement. The officer's actions did not meet SPD's standards of acceptable use of discretion and were not consistent with the standards of professionalism or training, the police force said. The statement added that officers were trained in 2019 on the appropriate use of ruses in criminal investigations. Seattle's police policy requires that officers be truthful except when there is a pressing threat to a person's or the public safety. Information is needed for a criminal probe or untruthfulness is required by the nature of the officer's assignment. Police across the country frequently use ruses to trick suspects into offering evidence or admitting guilt, according to the Harvard Law Review. The series of events that led to the man's suicide began on May 28, 2018, when several cars got into a crash that did not cause any injuries. According to Office of Police Accountability Report, officers determined that the man who had fled the scene was associated with the home on the other side of the city and they asked police from that precinct to go there to get a statement from the suspect. The woman who had answered the door told police that the driver was an old friend of hers. She let him register his car to her home because he did not have a permanent place to live, the report says. When the officers asked if she had the man's phone number, she sat down on the stoop and began scrolling through her phone to look for it. About 15 seconds later, one of the officers told the woman that they were looking for the man because he was involved in a hit and run earlier and left the woman in critical condition, and he left her. According to the report, the victim might not survive, the officer lied. The officers left with the suspect's phone number. Meanwhile, the woman tracked the man down, told him what the police said, and suggested that he hire an attorney, according to the report. The man said he did not think anyone had been injured in the collision, but he became increasingly worried as time passed. He had been addicted to heroin for almost 20 years and had previous legal issues, the report says. The suspect searched for information about the fatal hit and run and assumed that he did not find anything because police were withholding it pending the outcome of a criminal probe, according to the report. One of the man's friends lectured him about the lengthy jail sentence that he could face if he had killed someone. 
The man was crying the last time that his friend saw him, the report says. People believed that he had fatally struck someone but did not remember it. The suspect left a bag of belongings and money on the shelf of his friend's garage with a note that read, If you don't see me, keep this stuff. He also asked his roommate if it was normal to think about suicide, and the roommate said that it was. The next day, she found the man dead in his room. The roommate, the friend, the woman at the house, and the suspect's mother all decided to further investigate the hit and run, including requesting body-worn camera footage. They discovered that the man did not kill anyone in what was actually a minor fender bender. In March, the woman reported the officer's lie to the Office of Police Accountability. The officer's partner told investigators that when the officer told the woman that a victim was critically injured in the crash, she initially thought that she had misread notes about the incident. She said she remembered that the collision did not cause any injuries and that the hit and run was a misdemeanor. She told investigators that the woman cooperated with their requests and that the ruse had been unnecessary. The officer who lied provided a different interpretation of events. The woman at the door was uncooperative and kind of impeding the investigation. He said that he used the ruse while the woman was scrolling through the, her phone because he did not have time to wait for her to find the number. The officer said he had been trained on using ruses and knew that they could not shock fundamental fairness in this case. However, he said the lie had been appropriate and that he had not abused his discretion. If you or anyone know anyone that needs help, call the National Suicide Prevention Hotline at 1-800-273-TALK. You can also text a crisis counselor by messaging the crisis text line at 741-741. Now, this story is extremely disturbing, and we've talked about this in the past on officers being able to lie we had a discussion with someone who wanted to become an officer about officers being able to lie. He said they couldn't. We knew that they could. And this is why uh, doing such a thing is, is extremely dangerous. And this man who took his life, there are actually not many reports out there on this situation. I want to find out more about this incident. I want to see if we can get this officer fired off the force and never hired again anywhere else. In the United States for policing. If he wants to go police in Russia or North Korea, that's fine with me. But in America, we cannot have police that are doing these types of things. Quick shout out to Wayland's, Wayland Wire's Old Iron. Thank you so much for sending me the story. I know it took me a long time to get it out there. I did not present it the way I wanted to. I will do a follow up depending on the information that I get. If anybody else knows any information or video about this, the police officer's name. Let's get as much as information in the comments section. I will do a follow-up if we can. Let's see what we can do for this guy who killed himself, his family, his friends, and let's not let his death go in vain. Let's let the officer pay for his mistake that he made. That was not right. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I'll see you soon. Thank you.